Welcome to There Must Be More, a Bethel Ottawa podcast. Remember to like and subscribe on YouTube at Bethel Ottawa and follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify Podcasts. Welcome back to There Must Be More. This is the podcast where we wrestle with the human experience through the truth of scripture. I nailed it. Nailed Woo! it. So good. You had to take over for me because I couldn't do it this morning. Yeah, then I blew it at the end with my celebration. I I don't know how to make any of those things natural whatsoever. That's good, you did it. Do I need to redo that, producer lady? Uh, No, we're good. Okay. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. Here we are again. We are excited uh, to just be with you. So thanks for listening. We just want to remind you to give us a little thumbs up. Give us a little like. Make sure that you could ring the notification bell. So every time there's a new episode, it comes straight to your phone or your device or whatever you are listening or watching on. Um, And we're just very thankful that you are here. We are excited about today's topic of conversation. Um, So we want to ask you to, you know, have a little open mind about the conversation that we're having today. Oh, man. Okay. I mean, that's kind of any conversation we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always keep your minds open. Right. Totally. Always, always. Um, But yeah, I love the engagement. And like, we have this really great friend of ours who listens to our podcast and then she DMs us and usually (laughs) pushing back on me. And I love that. Like, I absolutely love that. You know who you are. Yeah, you know who you you are and you love broccoli so much. Um, (laughs) But I love that because because uh, this is why, because when I uh, work through things that we talk about, I like to be pressed so that I'm sure what I say, I believe. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, so. That's good. Yeah, it really is. It's really good to be pressed on these things now, like, because they're always done in a gentle way. Yes. And that's the key. Yeah. Right. Uh, was my mind changed on the last discussion we had? Absolutely not. <laughs> Uh, and that's good though, because yeah. then I'd be like, no, I, I do believe that. I do. Yeah. Believe yeah. That. You're firm in, yeah. you're firm in what you're saying, which is so, good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, do we have to have any kind of like really beautiful witty banter? Like <laughs> always. Is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You start <laughs> okay, us off. Well, here's what I, here's just what I want to say. <laughs> yeah. Like I have a different camera this week and here's what happened is last week, oh, the God. Sony that I was filming myself with overheated and it mm. shut off and I didn't know because I can't flip that? the screen Sony. out. So I brought my Canon because I like Canon better. Sorry. Yeah, Sony me too. People. I yeah, do too. I agree. Uh, I can flip it out so I can see myself. Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> also, at if we it. think it's weird that I'm here, please let me know. It's not weird. It's I not, love it. Actually, I, I really weird, like it when we, when I've watched it, cause I watch us all the time. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I did see that though, and I thought it was really cool. It was okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. I, I, yeah, I enjoy yeah. it. I enjoy it's, it. Cool. Uh, I like to be a part I of like it. I like your it's element yeah. though, because you uh, also do that push while we're talking. Yeah. Right. That sort of pushback, which it's we good. need because, I mean, if it's just the Rob and Sarah show, yeah. sometimes <laughs> People, it, can, it can go places. It can a little chaotic. It can go places. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, Maybe we, we didn't want to go there. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So We're glad. That's all I really wanted to say. Yeah, yeah so I, know, beautiful. Um, I should be there the whole time this time. Sorry, yeah, guys. Cool. Yeah, hopefully. good. It just won't overheat, hopefully. Yeah. It won't. I don't it understand won't. why they overheat it's if a it's a camera for like a long it's shoot a, i just don't why know. don't we do a podcast episode on the cameras <laughs> later <laughs> absolutely nobody's going to that. later he said <laughs> i would listen Rude. to that <laughs> <laughs> um also in other news if you hear drilling um, oh, yeah. <laughs> we have no control over so sorry. the drills the but power tools yeah, there's we, renovations happening in the yeah. building right now so yeah. if you if it's like silent for a second yeah. and you just hear a power tool yeah. so so sorry uh, we're not so we're sorry not doing but uh, that. there's nothing yeah. we can do about that cool yeah. anyways we want to like get rolling these yeah. like we this topic that we're talking about today i love it because what we do is we discuss these things like beforehand obviously mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but this brought out a lot of um energy, I think, yeah. as we were discussing, right? Yeah. So we know we're into something we want to talk about when we're sitting there and it's like, we oh, get, we're we wasting a, all the good stuff right here. Up. Yeah, it's so true. So hopefully true. we can bring back yeah, some of that. It's pattern. really hard because we sit in your office to like plan out everything mm. that we want to do, but we end up saying such good things things i think yeah, such like no, good, no. like challenging asking some questions that are like <laughs> oh we don't want to like use all of this up and mm-hmm. not put it on the podcast so it's like it's a hard balance of like what do we say here what do we say there what do yeah. we say there what do we say here like it's actually it's so hard it seems really 
silly and like uh, just have the same conversation. Silly. But we like, well, no, yeah. because like you say something and you say it just right. Yeah. And then the then other person like, Wait, goes, what? "Oh, yeah, I love that." And then you, then you write it down. And it's like now I've got to try and find this place to see that say this <laughs> thing that we loved yesterday or yeah, the day before. Yeah, just, and it's yeah, just like, oh, that's not as natural. Like the tension between that. Yeah. Right. You, you yeah. almost wish you could have cameras set up in the planning. I so say like, that to him all the time. I say we should record on the phone. What are we never say that to me ever? I have to. I said we should. We need to record. You must have said that to me before I started taking my ADHD Probably. medicine. What do we even Probably. do with that content though? Like, oh, so uh, yeah, much. So much. Okay. And half of it's honestly I don't know producer nonsense, that's but... your job. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Instagram yeah. Reels. Anyways we were talking about this topic. Yeah. So yes. that's why we're bringing it, bringing it here. Okay. So yeah. um, should we read the scripture first or should we give them a, a, a flavor of what the topic is? So let's give them a flavor because okay, in uh, last week's episode you said mm. this. Look at the memory and on you. that's what catapulted this um, conversation mm, today. Mm -hmm. um, so you said we were talking about social media and faith. How do we navigate that? So if you didn't listen to that one, go back and listen to it because it was a very Or maybe she can stitch in an, uh, an edit there. I mean, I could, but let's Ooh. just recap. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Too much work. Um, but you said um, when we are Christians and we're navigating social media, um, sometimes people aren't always going to agree with what we're yeah. sharing and right. whatever. Of course. And you said, um, to those who don't understand, it's foolishness. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are talking about that as Christians. Um, to non-Christians, we could seem foolish. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a good kind of foolish. Yes. Right? There's a good yes. kind of foolish and a not so great kind of foolish. And this is what we want right? to navigate. So we want to navigate, right. right? And then we want to answer, like, you want to talk about Jesus, and was Jesus a fool? Was oh, he not this, like, okay, this is, right? let's say that. What yeah. we wanted this title to be yeah, yeah. was Jesus, Jesus the Fool. Jesus the Fool. But then we were like, is that... What did you just say? Jesus the, the Fool. Okay, I thought you said Jesus, Jesus is the Fool. No, uh, no. Is Jesus the Fool. No, is Jesus, Jesus the Fool. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus the Fool. The fool. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You were right. That's what we have right now. I misheard. But... Then we were like, oh, should we like say that? Because we don't think. No, <laughs> yeah. Jesus no, will. exactly. Let's just disclaimer that, so right? I didn't like, want that title under my out. face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's clickbait. So that would be the yes. whole purpose of that. Yeah. Yeah. Clickbait's yeah. fine if you've got something saying, important just, to say. Saying, right. But we were like, we, we were, were nervous. We're like, oh, we're not so yeah, like, know, you know, we're not, not blaspheming <laughs> like Jesus. Yeah, 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 like, we don't, Jesus, we don't think you're. And then people start out wanting to be mad. Yeah, yeah. And then they hate us. But, um, all of that to say it was birthed out of what you said and not what you said, but it is scriptural too, but you brought yeah, it exactly. out. You brought it out yeah. uh, last week. So do you want to read our scripture? Yeah, so that we are going to do the scripture that, uh, that alluded to. Yeah. I didn't actually quote the scripture last week. You paraphrased. Um, but it was a paraphrase. So yeah. uh, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14 says this, but people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. Okay. And so when we're talking in the context of social media and, or, or like say listening to this mm -hmm. podcast, which mm -hmm. is like a form of social media, yeah. um, that exists because we are going to talk about things like psychology, but through the lens of scripture. Yeah. We are going to talk about the human experience, experience. but through the through lens, lens of, of scripture. scripture. So when I tell somebody um, there is power in forgiveness over justice or uh, revenge, revenge yeah. that doesn't necessarily make sense to everyone yeah. and they would see it as foolishness. Yes. Right? Yeah. Great example. Right. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing that we are talking about what we were alluding and foolish, to there, yeah. right? And, and in that scripture specifically. In that scripture yeah. specifically. Yeah. Yeah. So then the question is begged, I yes. think, because I think it's fair that an atheist would approach us with these things. Like, I mm. love that somebody... I would prefer somebody to wrestle with it and ask the hard questions and force us to have to answer them. But here's the question. Is Jesus a fool? I'm asking you oh, that question. <laughs> 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 I'm just sitting You're here like, silently. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay, do yes. you want me to answer my own question? No, I could do it. It's not a big deal. Okay. Well, we have the same answer, so really... Okay, let really me just ask it matter. again. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready this time? <laughs> I'm yeah. ready. Is Jesus a fool? To people who don't understand him, he absolutely is a fool, I would say. Okay. Right? Absolutely. So let's talk absolutely. about some of this stuff. Okay, so for um, example... Um, we know when we read scripture in the New Testament, when Jesus was here on earth, 
Um, there was a lot of things that were foolish to other people who didn't understand him, his ways, or his teaching. Yeah. Right? And so a big example of this for me is the Pharisees. Oh, Okay. Go, yes. And so this is not to like poo poo on the on the Pharisees because everyone likes to poo poo on the Pharisees. But like if we dig deep inside of ourselves, we are kind of the Pharisees. But that's a side that's well, a sidebar. Now, now that's a sidebar. Take, that's a sidebar. Take, take it easy. So <laughs> uh, for an example of uh, is Jesus a fool to those who don't understand? So the Pharisees. So they are. Um, they have studied the law. Mm-hmm. They have studied the scriptures that they mm-hmm. have. They that they've grown up with and all the things. And so an example comes to me when Jesus heals on the Sabbath. Right? And so for the Pharisees, the Sabbath is sacred. It's sacred because that's what they've known. That's what they've been taught. And I understand that. Like, I I understand that. That's all they know, right? Yeah. And so when Jesus comes in and he flips it literally upside down, because that's what Jesus does, and he heals on the Sabbath instead of resting and, and not doing any quote unquote work, Mm -hmm. um, they're up in arms Mm -hmm. because they don't understand. And so they think like, this is beyond foolish. Like this is reckless, right? It's foolish. What is he doing? Oh yeah. Right. And so I think, and that's an example of It's a good example. Thank you. That's a good, (laughs) it's an example of you don't understand. So it's foolish. Yeah. When in actuality, Jesus did the miraculous. Yeah. Right. And, and I love when you talk about he turned it on, he flipped it all over. Yeah. Right. Because there were so many things that the Pharisees so did not understand. Yeah. How about when Jesus was feeding his people, like feeding the disciples, yes. just some grains yeah. from crops, Yeah. you know, after their hard work of ministry. Yeah. Yep. Um, and he's just like, here, have some of this. And, yep. just, and they're like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> You can't do that. What are you? Right? And he's like, well, didn't David like literally go into the temple Mm. and like take bread he wasn't supposed to eat? Yeah. Like, okay, anyway. So like, and then um, the whole aspect of who the Pharisees were and that they kind of ought to be the ones to recognize the Messiah. Mm Mm-hmm. That throws everything on it because they're sitting there going, but we're the ones. Yeah, yeah. We're the I'm ones who are going to recognize and usher this in. Yeah. Right. And Jesus is yeah. going, ah, but listen, this is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Like Christians read the Beatitudes. Yeah. Because that MC5. takes everything and throws it on its head. Yep. Like everything. Yep. And those are st- Jesus's words. Yeah. Like and so st- you saying straight. that throws it on its head yeah. is like. Across the board. Yeah. It's And that's what the foolishness is, right? It's flipped upside down. People don't understand. It's never been done before. He ushered in a new age. Like, everything is flipped upside down. So Mm -hmm. it seems absolutely foolish. And it's even funny now, because I look at some of the stuff getting uh, reasoned away so that we can remain in the Old Testament. Mm. And I got... I got passion about the Old Testament versus the New Testament. Yeah, yeah. And I never... I, I wrestled with it for a long time. Because in the Christian world... People love to hang on to, but there will not be any ink that is stroked away of the Old Testament until, right? Mm-hmm. Until this is accomplished, mm-hmm. right? And so there's, and we also have scripture as profitable for teaching and yep. so wonderful. Yes, but listen, and even, oh, okay, I'm going to say something and you got to cut this out if it's too far, okay? But, it, but I think it's important. Just how we see Israel in the church, Right? So, like, there's a command that goes in the Old Testament that's, like, pray for Israel. You need to... It's not even a command, per se. It's not an ought to. Mm -hmm. Well, it is an ought to. It's like, be sure to pray for Israel, Mm -hmm. right? And then you will be blessed. Mm -hmm. And so we take that today, even, like, oh, you have to do that. It's like... But are we fully recognizing what Jesus did? Like, Jesus came and died on the cross, and now we're Israel. Like, now we are the people of God that brought the Gentiles in, that brought anybody who would accept Jesus in to the family of God. Mm -hmm. And so, like, he really fully did come in and change everything. Everything. Now you cannot do deeds that will get you in God's good book. You need to believe in Jesus, and then out of the outflowing, you will do good things. There's scripture that says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, Mm -hmm. and love your neighbor as yourself. If you do these two things, it makes up the entirety of the law and the prophets. It's unfortunately so simple and so difficult at the same same time, time. Mm -hmm. but but he changed it all. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah, that's good. So I don't don't know what you want to do there, but... 
I don't think there's anything wrong with what you said. Okay. Like, and it's I mean, hard because I know we're, we're passionate about these things. Well, and the thing is, is we have to learn to be okay with differences of opinion. Mm-hmm. Like we live in this world yeah. where we just refuse to be okay with that. Yeah. And like, so if someone disagrees with you, that's okay. <clears throat> You're yeah. Not, you're yeah. not like we're still gonna love blaspheming yeah. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I and that. it's really it's a it's a really difficult place though, too, because I would say for the health of who we are as individuals, for the health of the church, for the gospel to move in the power that it can, we have to believe fully in what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. So I'm not likely to move too far on the power of the Old Testament versus the 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 new New. covenant. Um, I'm not likely to move too far on that, but I would never um, dislike a person or be angry at them for for a differing opinion there. Exactly. Well, and I think it's just like, this is another example of why it's important to be in relationship with people Mm. because you can have conversations about these things and then that can help you understand where the person's coming from. So if you're not quite um, seeing the perspective, a longer conversation is going to help clarify things, right? Yeah. And there's only so much you can say in a, you know, 45 minute to an hour podcast. Yeah. Totally. Right? Yeah, right, absolutely. Right, right. right. So that's why, like, I would encourage anybody who's listening, don't just like discount things and then stop listening for the rest because there might be one thing you're like, mm, I'm not sure I agree with that or yeah. like, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. And yeah. you need to listen to the fullness, especially because we, we, we work through things. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You don't want to read a in. title and think that you've gotten yeah. the no. gist. Or, yeah. the, or you don't want to think yeah. you've got the depth of the conversation yeah. from a title. Yeah, yeah exactly. 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 Yeah. Okay. So that was one, going back to what I said with the Pharisees, that yeah. was one example of the Let's quickly like list a few other that we see maybe in scripture. Okay. So now you want me to do that. Sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> forgive 70 times seven. Yep. Doesn't even make sense to us. <laughs> it's very difficult. Yep. And like that also means then that you, you will have a feeling of being walked on. Mm-hmm. Um, Real quick on that, I want to say if you're a believer in Christ, you're called to disciple someone who's your one, Mm -hmm. and that means that you are called to possibly, possibly, you you have to at least understand that there's the possibility that as you grieve for that person who doesn't know Jesus, this is what I'm talking about, um, that they're going to let you down, Mm -hmm. and that you will not know on this side of heaven if they make it. Because another one, another one that we have trouble with... um, you honestly have till the last second to choose Jesus, right? It's in the, the parable of the workers mm-hmm. and getting paid. Yep. The ones who work an hour get paid the same as the one same. who work all day, and we get all yeah. mad. Yeah. Okay, but you walk with that person. You do not know what your testimony and the spirit of the Holy Spirit that you bring mm-hmm. with you does for that person's life. So in that last instance, they yeah. go, oh. Could change everything. They had it, mm-hmm. and they just call out to Jesus. And mm-hmm. in that moment, they believe. Yeah. Well, look at the thief on the cross next to Jesus when he's hanging there, right? Another one. Exactly. Yeah. That's another one. Yeah. Turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek. Yeah. You know, and he literally is like, the scripture says eye for an eye, but I'm saying, nope. Yeah. And here's where we like to reason that one out too. Actually, yeah. the turn the other cheek <laughs> is a way that you can one up the person oh, by showing them that they're a jerk and they're an even bigger jerk. Oh, no. Okay, then Let's fine. Not. Have that. He also says, give them your like more. They want to take your 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 sweater. Give them the shirt give that's the underneath shirt. that yep. too. Yeah. These yep. these are There's who Christ so many. is. There's so many examples in Scripture. Mm-hmm. So many, and I would I would actually challenge you to go through the Gospels and read through and be like, oh, l- look at all the things and list like that's foolish people who don't understand. It's foolish people who don't know who Jesus is because there's so much and you can learn so much from that. Yes. I want to say something, but I I don't know if I'm jumping ahead here and I forgot to bring the That's okay. That's okay. We'll we'll tell you if you are. Um, Yeah. Okay. So because here's the thing, I think we need to be honest about this as Christians. Sometimes it's foolish to us as well. Oh, yes. Right. Like it's not just foolish to people who don't believe. Yeah. Like when we really get down to the nitty gritty of Jesus and what he's telling us, it can feel foolish to us. Absolutely. Because That's, our culture has impacted us so much mm-hmm. yes. to say, no, this mm-hmm. is, you know, don't be walked on. Don't be this, that, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, so yeah, like give them your shoes when they take your jacket. That feels mm-hmm. foolish even as a Christian. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So even before you said that, and I love what you said, 
because when she was talking, something came to me. And so I'm going to take what you said one step further. Yep. And this is, I maybe you wanted to say this, but you're kind and sweet and gentle. <laughs> you ha- I think that we have to ask the question, do I like Jesus? Right. Do I love Jesus? Do I want to follow Jesus? Mm. So like we have to consider, is there places where you've started following an Americanized uh, uh, Jesus mm-hmm. That's rather real. than the Jesus that is... Of the scripture. That is... Mm-hmm. Maybe confusing to us, mm-hmm. like you're saying. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's, ha- it's, that's hard to follow because sometimes Jesus is hard to follow, mm-hmm. not because he isn't good, not because we don't know his character. Because I know, I would say, I know his character. Yes. I have a lot of history with him. He's walked me through fire and grief and pain, but still, he's hard to follow well, because at- of what he. Asks us to do yeah. it seems so foolish. Look sometimes. at his disciples who literally walked. Oh with my him. gosh! Yes, mm-hmm. they were never understanding. He yes. always had to explain the parables yes. to him, and he had to be like, like "Don't you get it by now? <laughs> like, why are you? What did he say? Why are you so daft? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, right. I'm yes. thinking he's daft. That I yes. wish he would have. That would be awesome. Uh, one version, I one think, version says, says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's got to be like the King James. King James. Right? Know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, yes. honestly, it's like, why? Like, no, it's like you're still not getting it. You're literally seeing the miracles. You're seeing. It in real time and you still don't get yeah. it. But here's it, the yeah. other part of that. For you to receive the forgiveness that you've been given, you have to believe in this Jesus. Yeah. 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 Like he does he isn't the Jesus who picks apart. He isn't the Jesus mm-hmm. who says, Oh, if you don't follow these rules, you will not be saved. Like he is the Jesus who came when we weren't looking for him. Yeah. He's the Jesus who offered the grace to everybody and for me to be able to even get that grace he has to be this difficult jesus and now he's asking me to follow that thing that i'm living in the freedom of yeah yeah yeah, yeah. wow that's good, good. That's oh good. this is i um, i love this conversation because <laughs> i just feel like i feel like there's such a possibility for the church mm. to to really just live and exist in full freedom and joy and peace and all those things to yeah. the point where n- none of it, like none of those things make sense to other people. And none of those things will destroy us or hurt us. Yeah. Like we're just solid. Yeah. We're just solid. Yeah. And yeah. I, I want that for, for the church. Yeah. I think all of those examples to lead us to like the ultimate example of like what is f- foolish to those who don't understand. And it's That's right. It's the cross. Well, Right. And so I just think of this in terms of um, the people were waiting for the Messiah to come. Right. Yeah. They're waiting for him to get here all their life. They they've been taught like the Messiah is coming. He's going to come. He's going to save. He's going to like take over the king. Like he's going to reign. Right. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus comes and he's so not like the king they thought he was going to be. Right, oh. and even when he he um it was when he died on the cross, <laughs> yeah. they thought, oh, it it didn't happen. He's dead. Like he didn't overthrow Rome, or he didn't like mm-hmm. he didn't come in the way that was expected. And so, to people mm-hmm. who don't understand, the cross itself is foolish, and him dying on the cross, hundred percent, for him to take over in that way mm-hmm. and usher in the new kingdom that yeah. way. I love that. Right, I love. That. I know. And I know. The, the way that he sort of let that. Ag- exist in my heart is that he showed us the heavenly way to speak truth to power. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And I love that because that's a phrase that's out there and it's probably even like a bit dead now that speak truth to power thing, but, but that exists. And we've always thought thought, treated speak truth to power as like, I'll give you my truth and, and you have to just sort of deal with it Mm -hmm. or or that should motivate you. What I'm, I think there's a lot of meanings in it, but Jesus is saying power on this earth is fleeting. It's nothing. Like, yeah. that's why he says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Yes. Right? Yep. He's saying, this doesn't mean anything. Yep. So yeah, give that to so him. Cares. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'll go die on the cross because this life yeah. in the spectrum of eternity is less than a grain of sand on all the beaches of the world. Yeah. Right? So like, yeah. so it's, it's, it's so powerful. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Huh. Now, um, let's talk about how Jesus handled people because I feel like that's another area where... Uh, we struggle. I feel like mm-hmm. we think that maybe how G I don't, I don't know that we actually address how Jesus handled people really. And in so not addressing that we can't deal with whether it's foolish or not. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. So how do you see Jesus handling people? All right. So, and com- <laughs> we're going to p- compare that to how we've seen us handling people. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. Okay. So when we look in the scripture, I think it's, 
extremely, extremely clear in how Jesus moves and operates and talks to people and makes people feel seen and loves them. Okay. And so we have, I'm trying to think of an example. So let's, yeah. (laughs) The scripture. So let's, yes, let's look at the woman in the well. Okay. So we don't know much about the woman at the well. He, He just meets her at the well. Yeah. Obviously, because she is the woman at the well. Yeah. And <laughs> um, <laughs> she is, well. she's thirsty for something in her life, right? Yeah. Um, and she's unsatisfied in what she has found her identity in or mm. her satisfaction in yeah. or um, her affirmation in. And so Jesus is literally just there at the, at the well. Yeah. Like walks up, asks for, a, you know, a drink of water. And she's like, well, I can't, like, I can't give you all the yeah. contacts and stuff of that. But, um, and he just talks to her mm-hmm. and kind of like reveals himself. Yeah, he's to like, her. If, he's like, if you know who you're talking if to, if you know who you're talking to, you'd never thirst anymore. Yeah, totally. Right. And she was like, well, like, you don't know me. Like, you don't know what I've done. Oh. Like, yeah. you don't know, like, yeah. my husband and this and that. And yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I just love. So sometimes Jesus is just like so funny to me yeah. <laughs> because. She's like, well, uh, you know, like, I don't have a husband. He goes, I, I know you had like six. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't in a like, it he was like, wasn't in he was a like, shaming yeah, right. way. He goes, he like, yeah, yeah he right. goes, yeah, I know. Like, that doesn't mean anything to me right now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I know yeah. you, you had six. Yeah. So I think of how we sometimes can see other Christians. Some mm-hmm. of us, like, we come at in a very condemning, shameful way. Totally. And this is just one of the many examples we see that Jesus yes. didn't come in with shame. He wasn't ushering in shame or condemnation or waving his finger and be like, actually you had six yeah. husbands. No. What do you think you're doing lady? No. What do you like? He's not calling her loose. He's not calling her promiscuous. He <sighs> didn't come in in that way. No. He talked to her and he said, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. And like, you don't have to thirst anymore. So forget about your husbands. Forget about what you've done. Mm-hmm. Like, just come to me. And follow me, and we're gonna figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Right? He, he like got to her level in a way. Yeah, like, you know how? I mean, you you work with kids, so this yes. this aspect of like getting down on a kid's level to talk to them, a hundred percent, is powerful. It is like for the kid, right? Yes. But, and I tell my teachers that all, when I train them, yeah, I when I say when you talk to them, get low and like why? crouch down. Yeah, and why? Because then you're on their level, yeah. and you're not just looking down on them yeah. and giving them the directives. Yeah. Like it's a it makes it, thing. it's a safety yeah. thing. Yeah. Yes. It's totally. so true. That's such a good connection. And wow. This is what Jesus does, right? He, he, he lets, he lets her know what she's in the presence of, mm-hmm. um, gives her a uh, inclination of the possibility mm-hmm. and then kind of goes, yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know you don't have a husband. I know yeah. you've got, Six. Multiple. Like, I know more than you think. But in yeah. that declaration, he is saying the truth in that. Yes. Right? Like, he, he is pointing out specifically in a prophetic way yeah, yeah. and showing the miracle of God in that. Mm-hmm. So if somebody were to say to me and, and list us, like, and be careful with what I'm saying here. Mm-hmm. Um, but if somebody were to say to me, like, you did this, and it was very specific, mm-hmm. and it was very, I'd be like, okay, mm-hmm. God is in that. Mm-hmm. None of these generics, like, don't just give somebody a generic sin and try mm-hmm. and prophesy that over mm-hmm. them. But, so Jesus is like, you have six, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but it's not in that condemnation way because, yeah. and scripture says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now yeah. listen, you might go, well, she wasn't in Christ Jesus. She was in that moment. Yes. She was engaged in Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah that's right? good. This is the journey and the start of the journey, but yes. she was engaged in Christ Jesus 100%. in that moment. So we can't be the ones who come in with a wagging, wagging finger mm-hmm. declaring everybody's sin yep. because scripture will tell us, go deal with that log in your own eye yeah. so that then you can come and love your yeah. people, right? And so. we can't dictate who or who is not in the presence of God, right? Or who was not in like with Christ Jesus, like you said, in in that verse, Mm -hmm. she was with him. Right. And you don't know what people are doing or, or when they're being with him or like, we can't be the ones to dictate that. No, that's foolish. That is foolish. And And don't be the gatekeeper of God's heart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like what, what he's feeling for that person, because you can in like unintentionally show, um, an emotion towards a person could be your disdain for a certain sin, mm-hmm. which is not unreasonable. Like, don't, mm-hmm. don't, mm-hmm. 
Like we're you, allowed to dislike sin. Yeah, like we're there supposed are, to dislike sin. <laughs> yeah, and there are even especially appalling sins. Yeah, absolutely. That we would struggle with and should struggle with. Yeah. Okay, but the fact is that when we come in with like different emotions and and um, the wagging finger, we are mm-hmm. showing people unintentionally probably what we're projecting like what God mm-hmm. feels onto them. Because mm-hmm. that's what they would experience. Like, mm-hmm. oh, this is how God feels about me. Oh, that's sad. He thinks I'm gross. Oh, He's ashamed of me. That makes me so sad. Right. That's and, not true. and this and then goes to the discipleship thing. It yeah. really goes like, yeah. how long are you willing to walk with somebody before they get it? It's mm. good. I don't like that's between you and God. Yeah. But don't then decide that for somebody else. Because mm-hmm. if somebody's like, I'm going to walk with that person their entire life, don't tell them they've done yeah. something wrong loving somebody yeah. for an entire lifetime. Yeah, Jesus was willing to walk with Judas knowing what he was going to do. Oh, was that going to go in this one? Mm-hmm. We were going to get oh, to that, yeah. Sorry. No, no, no it's great. It's good. Because you're, you're catapulting us. But That's like, good. That's, he, yeah, he, we knew, he knew the end. He knew what would become, but he still walked with him. Mm-hmm. And he didn't like, at one point he said, yeah, one of you is going to betray me. But he still wasn't like, Judas, I see what's going on in your heart. Get it together. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, like he yeah. walked with him. Well, yeah. he, he loved allowed, him. Exactly. He, loved him. he allowed He's, him to yeah. be in his inner he circle. He sat with him. Even till his very end where he, exactly. like he knew, he still broke bread with him. Yeah. And he s- sat with him. And let me right? just say this about Judas. And I, we can't make declarations on Judas. Okay. No. I was going to say, I was going to say that. We can't make declarations yes. on him because we are not God. I we exactly. do not know yes. anything about a lot of things to do with death and eternity. Yeah. I kind of really feel bad for Judas. Yeah. I'm, I, I mourn I for him and I, feel bad and I hope for him. For him. Yeah. It's like this, it's like this uh, weird, I get this like caught in this loop when I think about Judas because mm. <laughs> was he doing the Lord's will? <laughs> well, right. he was destined to do this. Right. But was that because his heart was so hard? I don't like, know. Oh, yeah. I don't Someone know. had to. Yeah. Someone right. Had I know to. there's so many layers. It's I know. Like, it's just it's like, so nuanced. It, it's like a, you really, your brain explodes yeah. when you think too much about it. Yeah. It really I, does. And yeah. then there's this difficult place where I exist where every part of my innerness wants to be. So I would be a hopeful universalist mm-hmm. and that can be heard so wrong. Mm-hmm. So don't yeah. hear what I'm not Ex- saying. Yeah. I'm not Ex- a universalist. Yes. I don't believe that all paths lead not, to heaven, yeah. but I no. hope everybody gets there. Yeah. And yes, I hope that there is yes. so much more that I don't know that I'm, I can't, I yeah. want to go to heaven and be like, oh, really? Surprised. Yeah. Yes. Happily Shouldn't surprised. we all That's, hope for that? I, yeah. I think I so. Think we should. I think that I think should be at our core. Yeah. But, but even to the, to the Judas thing, like, you know, we as Christians can read that and think that's so foolish. Like Jesus knew he was going to betray him. So why did he still let him stick around? Why did he still love him? Why did he still walk with him throughout all of that? Like, yeah. so even in that sense, it seems foolish that Jesus, Absolutely. like, why wouldn't you just get rid of the bad friend? Right. Right. Be like, he's not going to be any part of this. Like, yeah. oh man, you know, yeah, and Ju- there's just, Judas, yeah. Judas could have still done what he did, that proper grammar. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He still could have done still that. Could have been the outcome. Even if he wasn't in there, yeah. right? Yeah. He yeah. could have been like, Jesus could have been cast him out. Yeah. And he still could have brought him to yeah. the Romans. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Every single thing Jesus does shows us how to live. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. There's not one That's thing that you look at Jesus and go, I don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. If you're a follower of Jesus, he says, obey my commands. His life is our, is the command. Is the command. Yeah. That's so good. That's a really great point, Shan. Yeah. Oh, thank you. This, I love adding Shannon because um, <laughs> I know, it adds a, a whole new level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it adds a whole new yeah. level. Um, we're 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 pretty far into this, yep. uh, and so we do want to touch on a couple other things. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to move into maybe how we've misunderstood foolishness. Yep. And I think we have to do this a bit quicker. Yep. We have to run through this part a bit quicker. Yep. Um, but what have what have we sort of misunderstood? when we talk about this foolishness, like when yeah. we say this statement or yeah. when we read the scripture, read the scripture but it's foolishness to those who don't understand. So where do we go wrong? Okay. I think you said this and you said it so like cohesively, hmm. I guess. Was it one of those moments yesterday? And we were like, <laughs> write that down. Yes, we, okay. So you're going to nail it. Go. Yeah, no. So you, um, you said something along the lines of like, sometimes the scripture can give us license to have any kind of like spiritual response. Mm, Right. Like, so have we empowered ourselves to use the scripture 
in a negative way. So, yeah. for example, yeah. um, if y- let's say I'm walking in a store mm-hmm. and there's something there that I don't agree with, clothing or a kid's toy or decoration or something, mm-hmm. and <laughs> I like walk up to it and I like rebuke it in the middle of the grocery store. <laughs> Win for Jesus. It's just like, uh, I just, to me, that's foolish in the in the wrong in the wrong uh, way. Yes, that's not the Jesus kind of foolish, right. right? This is the human flesh kind of foolish. Yes. So, like, first of all, I'm doing that in the grocery store. If I'm like speaking in tongues and rebuking something out loud, number one, I look insane. Yes. Um. So, how is that helping my witness to the Lord? Yes. And B, if you feel. Did I do one and B again? Yeah. I always do that. <laughs> one good. and I love B. It. So one, number two. <laughs> um, I think sometimes if you are convicted about a sin or something that's going on, or you feel that you need to like intercede and pray on behalf of that, absolutely let the spirit lead you in doing that. Do it at home. Yeah. Do it in your prayer closet. Oh, yeah, this is what we talked about. Do you you probably have so much more power and authority by getting on your knees alone before God and saying, praying into something. Don't pray like the hypocrites. No, (laughs) close the door, do it in secret. Like, Uh, so that is something that I get like passionate about because I'm like, what are we, what are we doing? It's, not helping the witness of Jesus Christ. And And we never, like you said, Jesus is the model. Mm -hmm. We didn't see Jesus really like go up to like Zacchaeus in the tree and just start rebuking him in front of all the people. He was like, Hey, I'm going to come to your house today. So come on down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like there's also biblical guidance on how to pray in tongues. Yes. And how to use tongues. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have a scripture too, that we're going to read to like, go for it. Context. Go for it. The, we want, you know, we want to be a little more like Jesus foolish. We don't really want to be the human flesh kind of foolish. Well, And this was Paul, right? (laughs) Right? So this is Paul speaking. And this is before the foolish talk. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like, so let's just, I want to try and really quickly say, like reiterate what we're saying here. So like that first part is talking about the foolishness. What we're saying is that um, we tried to give a clear expression of how it looks foolish, like the parts that really are foolish and why we reasonably struggle with them and why the Mm -hmm. world would reasonably struggle with it, Mm -hmm. but why Jesus is right. Yes. Um, And then we moved into what we're getting wrong in the sense of when we use, say, that That scripture scripture specifically to give ourselves license to do what Whatever spiritual work we deem necessary yeah. and just then chalk it up to, well, you don't understand because you think it's foolish. Yeah. When really it might just be foolish. It might just be. And you're not asking Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you. Right. And so the reason that I wanted to just reiterate that yeah. is because it's around that foolishness scripture. And if we read the context yeah. of that scripture, we go to the beginning of the chapter yeah. and what was Paul's attitude there. And if yeah. you read it. That would... Okay. So this is in... Um, Still First Corinthians. Chapter 2. Yeah. 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 Beginning of the chapter Beginning, yeah. of our verse. Okay, so it says, When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words <laughs> and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message and my preaching were very plain. Okay? Mm. Plain. Interesting. Uh, Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so that you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Boom. I love that. So don't also hear us say something that we're not saying. God's miracles will show people him. Yes. But we're talking like healing. Okay, Mm -hmm. we're not talking the word of wisdom or knowledge that Mm -hmm. you think he's given so that you can Mm -hmm. rebuke somebody in public. That's not what we're talking about. Yes, like we're talking when I'm talking about how God's miracles will show and pull people towards him. Yeah, Jesus always went and healed. Yeah, that's what he was doing. Yeah, he was going around healing. Then people go, I need to know this guy. Yeah, that's a key factor there. Paul is saying, before he says all this stuff is foolishness, he's saying, I came to you so simply, and mm-hmm. I just relied on the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I kept it plain. I didn't 
persuade you. I didn't use fancy language. I didn't language. walk into the grocery store. I did, yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't go out onto the street and start speaking in tongues and mm. telling everybody they were going to hell. Well, mm. like, how how is it beneficial to anybody to just go out and act crazy? Like, honestly, you're not going to be able to reach people that way. They're yeah. just going to be like, that person's crazy. Yeah. And then you have you have put a barrier in between you and them. Mm -hmm. You've stopped any kind of relationship because it's like, well, they're crazy. So I'm not going to go talk to them. Yeah. could be someone you work with. It could be, you know, someone you just encounter, but like we need to not act ridiculous. Foolish. Well, it does get attached to Jesus too. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the thing that I have a hard time with. And so I personally, I believe in the power, obviously of the Holy spirit. I believe in, a prophecy. I yeah. believe in speaking in tongues. Yeah. I like. I believe in all of that. Absolutely. I'm. I'm. Ex- I'm very charismatic in yeah. my yeah. beliefs. Um. <coughs> so here's the thing about like when you're talking about that. If you say you have like a prophetic word for somebody, you're in the grocery store. You're at Walmart, and you feel like the God, God is speaking to you, and the Holy Spirit is moving you. Mm. So, a, it has to line up with scripture. Yeah. It needs to be. Um, encouraging it edifies the person it edifies christ Mm -hmm. yeah if you have this prophetic word of like i need to go up to that person and tell them that their sin is this x y and z and that they're doing this and this and this and that god is going to smite them down you most likely did not hear from the spirit of god no because that doesn't go into the parameters of what the prophetic message should be like or the ought uh, to be ought to be yes Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, that, with that. I just want to make that clear because we're not saying that God doesn't move in that way and that He can't speak to people and that, but we have to not be foolish yeah. in and that. bring human wisdom and bring and, human. And that's, and that's what Paul says. And human, like, um, I did this so you would not trust in human wisdom, but the power of God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, those revelations are going to come out of relationship. Yes. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Most, like most likely. Yeah. And just as sort of an, like an aside, I think we've all had those conversations as Christians with Christians mm-hmm. who, it's like you can you can't even really hold a conversation with them because it's everything is spiritual, everything is you know not on this realm, and it's like you and to a degree that's actually true, but sure, but yeah. like we need to be able to have conversations, yeah. like yeah. we need to be able to talk in a way that makes sense, and you're not like oh my gosh, yeah, oh what was that like, and then imagine that person talking in the same way to someone who has no. Hmm. no idea, idea mm. of about church, and well, so Christ, now they're yeah. like oh. People, they're it. crazy. They're in a cult. They're this, they're that. They have all these yeah, yeah, yeah. labels that they've now put on because they yeah. have like a really weird encounter with someone who professes to love Jesus. So I, I just, yeah, I so agree. And while you were saying that, I'm thinking, okay, what we tend to do then is when we're hyper spiritual like that is we position ourselves in combat and people will go, amen, we are, we're in a spiritual warfare. Okay. Mm. I don't disagree with that, no. mm-hmm. but what's our, what's our defense to that? Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. and if you look at Jesus, it's to go up to the cross and die. Mm-hmm. Our our defense is love, yeah. um, and real Always. love, not it's conditional sacrifice. love. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't disciple people because they're a project. We don't disciple people to get the next notch on our Christian belt. Um, mm-hmm. Like no, really, and so. These are very important distinctions that we have to understand about spiritual warfare. Our spiritual warfare is to do what God called us to do. Mm -hmm. It's actually to believe in him Mm -hmm. and then to do the work. Mm -hmm. And that is our faith. Mm -hmm. I just remembered something we had talked about yesterday and we talked about the scripture. um, The battle is not in flesh and blood. Blood, Mm -hmm. So let's not act in flesh and blood with our spiritual warfare. Yes. Yeah. It's the really good. Go, Fire! Yeah. <laughs> right? I love it. So good. I, don't, I, I think yeah. um, we have a lot more to talk about here, so um, I, I think we just kind of have to continue Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, keep, let's move on. That, but that, no, that changes also. It's good. Um, it can be easy to stay in the negative because we are passionate about how we want to be, <laughs> yeah. how we want to come across, so yeah. let's not stick there. No, no, yeah. and that's not at all what I was saying. What no, I'm no, no. saying is specifically, and I was trying, to, I was hoping you guys would catch on to this, oh, sorry. we won't have time to shoot the second podcast this morning, right. so we might have to do it later. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was trying to get at, but nobody was, nobody I was, got you. Even nobody was hip to my jive, <laughs> and because I, I think we need to stay here uh, for a bit, because um, we are very much representatives of Christ. Um, 
and we want to see people live in freedom, like there is a victory to be had. Mm -hmm. So like the idea of the battle is real. There is a battle going Mm -hmm. on. You know, um, there's, yeah. there's a battle in my mind, mm-hmm. uh, and that can be against the enemy that can be against, uh, the self mm-hmm. that can be against the world, mm-hmm. right? There's mm-hmm. these, these different kind of spirits that come in to, yeah. to affect that. Yeah. Um, but, and there's a battle in the spiritual as well. Yeah. But yeah. I think like, what if we took it to the one, the one place that maybe we could go that we would say, what is the one command of Jesus mm. that if we ignore it, it's pretty difficult to call ourselves followers of Jesus? Yeah. So I think that command is from uh, Matthew 22, and it's love the Lord your God with all your heart, yeah. all your mind, all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, man. Okay. If we can't do that, and... I know it's like verse one and verse two, but they go hand in hand, right? Yes. Did I say the right? Yeah, he said the next is like it. Yes. The next is like it, right? So we can we can't love. I know you got me panicked for a second. No, no, no. Um, We can't love Jesus and not love one another. No, we're all we're all image bearers, right? Yeah. Um, And so a lot of times it's like oh verse one and then verse two, but they go hand in hand. Absolutely. And I this is like a. a, quite a statement to say, but if you can't do either of those things, you're not a Jesus follower. Like it's, it sounds obvious, but you have to think about this. Like in my everyday life, Mm -hmm. am I loving Jesus with every part of me? And I'm also loving others with every part of me. Yes. Well, the truth is, is if we are really loving the Lord, our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The rest is going to come. Yes. It We're just, overflows. It's exactly. It will overflow out of it's, us. We will love our neighbor yeah. as ourself. Yep. That's scriptural. Yeah. So all the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments. Yeah. All the law and the prophets don't hang on the one commandment. Yeah. All of the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments. Now yeah. you cannot necessarily love your neighbor the way that God wants you to without first loving the Lord, your God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why there's this distinction. It's almost, almost like core values, right? Yeah. yeah. You have to know that that's top. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't Everything love the Lord, your God, the something yep. is going to break down in your love for your neighbor. Yeah. And yeah. that's Absolutely. why we see Jesus being foolish. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that, that, that can be missing. So that's Mm -hmm. why we like revenge. That's why we want to see shows where people like, we love Taylor Swift, get back at the guy songs, those kind of things. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's not a love the Lord, your God moment, Taylor, but, 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 um, but so vital and it makes up the entirety of the law and the prophets. And this then goes back to what I was talking about, um, with the old covenant and the new covenant. Mm -hmm. It is just so, it's so simple. Yeah. Like there is you if you can if that's true, you could take that scripture with you, lose your Bible, and if you still did that, mm-hmm. you would be doing what he wants. Wants. Yeah. Yep. What he commanded. Right? Yeah. Which is yeah. hard for us to fathom because we love the fact that Paul came in and brought rules again. Yeah. Right? Now, let me be clear there. Paul is doing something that maybe we don't recognize is Mm -hmm. that he's doing out of his love for Christ. So he's saying, out of my love for Christ, I'm seeing these things that are wonky Christians, Mm -hmm. Christ followers. Yeah. And so you, Christ followers, ought not to do these things because if you love Jesus, like your focus would be on him, not on, you know, having big parties where lots of bad things are happening. Yeah. Whatever the case. Yeah. But we we have taken Paul then to almost act like he's brought in the Ten Commandments again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not the case. No. He's no. not saying, if you do this thing, you are now out of favor with God. Yeah. You, he doesn't love you anymore. Yeah. So get it right, or yeah. that's not how it works. Yeah. We have to believe in his grace and his mercy and yeah. find how we can exist in that and be free in it and live in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Wow. It's good. If in case you didn't hear the emphasis that Rob put, he was talking to Christians. Yeah. Like we don't, and forgive me if I'm wrong, I have not memorized the entirety of the New Testament. (laughs) I can't think of an example of Paul on the street pointing out uh, the sin of a non-believer. I don't see it. Mm. I don't see it from Jesus. I don't see it from Paul. I don't see it. So why do we do it? And I do like what Paul does go into a place where they don't know Christ. And he goes, ah, oh, I see that you've got this God. Let me tell you about him. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. You, need the, you have the unknown God? Yeah. Let me tell you about the unknown God. He is the one God. He's the only God. Mm-hmm. He is the best God. We win. But all the whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But like comes yeah. in with this like um yeah, this encouragement, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And speaks into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100 percent Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other thoughts on this? You? Me? Yeah. Um, I think we have to remember when we talk about like the foolish aspect of um, the initial scripture that we read, like people who don't understand are not in the spirit. They're not going to understand it. It's, it's foolish. Um, I think we have to always, always, always be checking our hearts. Mm -hmm. Right. And Mm -hmm. so we have to always line it up with the gospel and specifically with uh, Jesus. Right. And so I think, it's very easy to get swayed um, by, I guess, like other what other people are doing, what other Christians are sure. doing, and or you their think thoughts like, on things, or their thoughts on things, yeah. right? You can say like, oh, like, but they're they're really impacting the kingdom. But I think like, okay, you you have to bring everything back to who. Jesus is. You have to. Everything in the scripture, right? We have to look at the gospel and we have to look at our heart. Those have to line up. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And the heart of the gospel. The heart of the gospel. Right? Like what's the heart of the gospel? Yeah. Well, it's summed up there. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Yeah. And just love your neighbor. As but you also yeah. have to read the Old Testament that way. Yes. Do not read the Old Testament yeah. as a list of to do's and not to do's. Yeah. They are a, a list of things that show um, God's requirements, I suppose, yeah. right? You could think of it that way, but yeah. things that we could never accomplish. Yeah. Um, so he sent Jesus. Yeah. So all of it, you have to read the yeah. whole Old Testament through the lens of Jesus yeah. Christ. And then yeah. you have to read all of Paul's letter through the lens of Jesus Christ. And yeah. if it's not being taken back to Jesus, you're missing the key factor. Yeah. Literally yeah. the key factor. He, he is the key factor. Yeah. He's the center. Yeah. He's everything. Yeah. 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 And I think too, like you need to look at Look at your, you need to look at your life. Like, um, if people think you're foolish because you follow Jesus, that's okay. If people think you're foolish because you're acting not with any wisdom, Mm -hmm. that's not okay. So like, I think, (laughs) um, like, I think for myself, like you have to, we have to check ourselves all the time. So like, I have a family member who is very anti Jesus, anti Christianity, mm-hmm. anti everything. And so to me, she looks at me and they'll think like, she's wasting her time. This is so foolish. Like there, Jesus isn't alive. Jesus is like, who, like yeah. he's nothing. Yeah. Right. If someone thinks of me foolish in that way, I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah. If I'm out here teaching bad theology, if I am going up to people in the grocery store and just like speaking tongues in their face, <laughs> am I, if and being I'm, angry at their evil. And being angry <laughs> and like, like, you know, doing things that are just not wise. Yeah. If people think I'm foolish that way, I need to, that needs correction. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's, we want foolishness, but foolishness in Jesus. Right, we want to follow Jesus, the quote unquote fool, yeah. um, because we're following him. And so, if he looked foolish, that means we're automatically going to look foolish because we're following him. Yeah, and we have to be okay with that. Exactly. Right? There's the right kind of foolish that we want to be. There's a hundred percent the yeah. right kind of foolish, yeah. and it's going to look like love. Yeah. So it's going to look like, oh, you know, I I can't believe that you would do that for someone. Yeah, it's going to look so countercultural. Yeah. 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 It's not going to look okay. crazy in the sense of. No. <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, it's, yeah, like, what like, are you oh, doing? Like, yeah. Yeah. Should we send you somewhere? Yeah. I, like, no, really. Like, it's not going to be this kind of like, because we do, we deal with mental health issues, mm-hmm. right? And we have to take those very, very seriously, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we don't need Christians going out and like yelling at people in public. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I have had family yeah. who had those moments yeah. and they're really very real and they're very hard, yeah. but we can't go and say that Jesus has called us to go out and do something that's like that. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it's, it's not who Jesus was. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So this is, this has been really good. Really. Um, I don't know. I, I, it motivates me. I think, I think if there's a scripture that I want to leave people with, it's yeah. Matthew, like it's Matthew 22. Right? Love yeah. the Lord your God. Like yep. if that's the only thing that you take yeah. 
from anything that we ever do on the podcast. Yeah. Honestly, take that. Please. Take, take that. Love the Lord your God yeah. with all your heart, with all your mind, mind. with all your soul, your identity, mm-hmm. and with your physical, your strength, mm-hmm. right? Like the holistic you, which is going to be when you're in Christ, as we've talked about, your authentic you, yeah. and all the aspects of that, then, then you're doing all right. You know, he will give you everything you need to love people well. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, some people are going to look at it as foolishness. And that's okay. Yeah. Because we are supposed to be foolish people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Thanks for listening. Yes. Keep the conversation going. Mm -hmm. You know, send us a DM or a message or whatever. Or honestly, just share this with a friend. If that's all you do, share it with a friend. Talk about it. Yeah, talk about it. We would love to see that. So yeah, thank you so much. All right. We love you. Love you. See you next time. Thank you for listening to There Must Be More Podcast, a production of Bethel, Ottawa. You can catch us on YouTube where we would love it if you liked and subscribed. You can also catch us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify.